Thanks for being with us on our latest edition of the Marketplace. It is the NBL's look at the free agency period. We've seen just about everything in this free agency period so far, but what we're going to talk about off the top today is completely unexpected. I'm Jack Heverin, as always, alongside the best newsbreaker in Australian basketball, Olga Newlich from ESPN.com.au. Olga, there is a very famous and very familiar name who's about to return to basketball, and he's choosing Australia to make his return. Jack, if, if there was uh, one free agency move that no one would have picked going into this offseason, it would probably, it'd probably be this one. Jonah Bolden is returning to basketball and it has signed a one-year deal with the Sydney Kings. Uh, now, Jonah Bolden, we can contextualize him a little bit. Uh, out of UCLA, a Sydney kid, um, uh, played with the Philadelphia 76ers, played playoff games for them. He was part of their rotation. Two seasons in the NBA. As soon as COVID hit, his basketball career sort of just stopped. He went on a hiatus. He focused on business ventures. He uh, spent time with his family. He matured as a person. He grew, uh, you know, spiritually. That's the th- sort of thing he wanted to chase. But I spoke with him recently, and he he got the urge around his twi- 27th birthday uh, earlier this year to maybe get back into to playing basketball again. And then that that playing basketball turned into wanting to be part of a professional team again. About three or four weeks ago, the Sydney Kings and Bolden's management engaged seriously in bringing him in and it, it took some process it, it took the kings you know vetting him in in a way he's a really unique situation not having played professional basketball for three years but they're able to get that over the line and jonah bolden like his dad bruce bolden is a sydney king so why sydney i mean you mentioned bruce and, and the history of the bolden family and the the sydney kings but um why is he chosen of all of the options that he had worldwide it's great for the nbl but why has he chosen the sydney kings to restart his career well, from from my chat with him, he had a he sat down with his dad and he spoke about wh- where is the best place where I can go. It can be a comfortable place for me to be. Um, it, it's somewhere that is proven when it comes to winning, but also when it comes to being organized as a franchise. And the Sydney Kings just happened to tick all of those boxes. Now, it's important to note as well that the Kings have realistically been chasing Jonah Bolden for three or four years, right? It's always been a hard no. Jonah Bolden was an NBA player. He, he was a budding NBA player. Played, again, rotation minutes for the Philadelphia 76ers. Played in their playoff series. He was waived by them, picked up by the Phoenix Suns, and that didn't really go anywhere. But you know, he was a, an NBA player. And everyone around world basketball thought that way. And so the Kings have been on his tail for quite some time. Uh, it, again, it was only recently when those talks became serious and everyone engaged seriously and this became a real possibility. Um, and, and now the Sydney Kings are thinking that they, they're, they're really, really happy with the sort of positional versatility that they're going to have with someone like Jonah Bolden at the five, DJ Hogue at the four. Um, it, this, it just, this is the local big that they've been going after. It is, it's a fascinating signing for a lot of reasons. What, what sort of expectations should Kings fans, and I guess by extension Hoops fans in Australia, what expectations should we have around Jonah, Jonah and his return? You spoke about his... NBA credentials, he's played in Serbia, he's played in Israel, he's played for the national team at various levels. What do you think? Well, from everyone I've spoken to, athletically, he seems to be in a really good place. He, he's been doing yoga over the years, apparently he's put some mass on as well. And so athletically, he should be you know, fairly similar to what he was uh, before he took that three-year hiatus. Um, when it comes to his touch, I think everyone just has to be somewhat realistic about the prospects of someone not having played basketball for so long coming in and playing professionally again. I'm sure there will be some sort of teething process. The Kings are prepared for this. Jonah Bolden is prepared for this. Um, But the expectation is that, you know, let's say come, you know, a a quarter way through, halfway through the season, Jonah Bolden can sort of get get his feet under him, get back to a a really similar spot to where he was before taking that break. And and if he does get get to that point, the Sydney Kings believe that he could be a top three, four, five player in the NBL. It, it just might take that little bit of time and, and, and teething just to get to that point. They've still got a couple of decisions to make Sydney around their roster. This is a huge one. So congratulations to Chris Pongrass and the team. And great to have Jonah back playing basketball. Obviously, we love the fact that he's playing here in the NBL next season. But I think from an Australian point of view, just great to see him playing. The next decision, though, is their coach, Olgan. We spoke about this last time. Any updates on the replacement for what's going to be one of the best jobs in world basketball right now. There is, there is a small update, Jack. I'm told that 
the shortlist of candidates has been narrowed down to three. Uh, there are three prospective candidates going for this job at this point. Uh, the Sydney Kings are locked into their processes. I'm told they're all American candidates as well. Um, but the Sydney Kings have been in lockstep uh, as as an organization. There's there's a, a brains trust at the top of that franchise that leads all the processes for them. It's the processes that got them DJ Hogue. It's, it's the ones that made sure that Jonah Bolden was a reasonable signing for them. The, the, the process it took to get him was really unique. They, they went through, uh, and he went through a, a scrimmage on Friday, an individual workout on Saturday. The Kings medical team took a look at him. They did a physical, a screening. And so the processes within the Sydney Kings seem to be clicking on all cylinders. That, that also relates to the head coach. Uh, I, I, I imagine that the when it comes to that decision being made, I wouldn't expect it extremely imminently, but I imagine there will be some sort of buffer ahead of the summer league, so the conversations can happen with that coach with regard to the import point guard that they choose to bring in, and, and obviously the style of play. They want to be able to have you know all, all of everything sorted ahead of going to summer league and, and you know finding those final players. The two-time champions are making some moves. Let's turn our attention to far north Queensland and. Adam Ford spoke about the need for an import guard to play around his young team. He wanted experience. He wanted an international resume, and they found their man. They did, Jack. Patrick Miller, 6'1 point guard, has played all around the world. Uh, recently played for Bros Bamberg in Germany. Um, really a high-level defender, um, a, a elite competitor as well. Uh, not so much of a shooter, but you know, I, I think the Taipans have succeeded with that sort of player before. He joins the ranks, and, and now we're just in a situation of, you know, who, who starts, who fits where, who plays well amongst each other. They've got a really unique uh, group of guys when it comes to a, 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 an interesting crop of versatile bigs and then some create creation-heavy, non-shooting guards. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how everyone fits together, uh, but, but Patrick Miller was their guy. He's a friend of uh, Tajir McCall. Um, Again, who starts, who comes off the bench is something for Adam Ford to, to decide. But you know, at the very least, they got a really quality defender and from, from all reports, a quality competitor too. Well, they're just about there now, aren't they? The Cairns Taipans, their roster is, is almost complete. Yeah, they have a, a local spot to fill and, and one more import spot to fill too. And, and they're not the only ones who are near completion. The Sydney Kings, you know, assuming nothing changes between now and the start of the season, they've got all of their local players locked in with that Bolden signing. Uh, the... So a lot of teams only have one or two spots left. We're, we're really reaching the, the pointy end of this free agency, Jack, and, and I think Summer League will be where everything comes to a head. And we'll have you covered right across the Summer League here at nbl.com.au. Uh, the New Zealand Breakers, I wanted to ask you about an article of yours that was published on the weekend at espn.com.au. You can check it out on all of Olgan's social media feeds as well. With Moni Mayor, the coach of the New Zealand Breakers, you... You covered a lot of ground. The thing that really pricked my attention from a marketplace point of view is what they're looking to do next. And he was very clear about the type of player or players that he wants to add to the Breakers lineup. Yeah, so I spoke with Mayo over the weekend and there is a sense that while McDowell White was, again, priority number one and the, the, the guy that they want to build around, there, Mayo felt as though there was a lack of creation last season. He pointed to McDowell White, he pointed to Barry Brown Jr., and to some extent, Isaiah Liapa, but he, he feels he wants more. And so that, that's the, the key when it comes to the, the import spots that they're going after. He wants a 4-5, so some, someone in the same mold as a Jarrell Brantley, but he wants guys who can play alongside Will McDowell White, but who can also create on their own. And so he told me they're looking, he doesn't like positions, and, and I don't think any coach in the NBL or across world basketball does anymore either, but he wants a two and a three. So you can imagine these guys playing alongside McDowell White, maybe some more potent scoring, but also some creation just to, to take the load off of McDowell White to an extent. Uh, that's what Mayor feels is the best for his team. And they're going to play a similar brand of basketball. They're going to be defense first and then very half-court heavy, play a really slow pace. In order to do that, it is helpful to have uh, elite creators you know, next to Will McDowell White, who is one of the best connectors in Australian basketball. Olgan, as always, great to see you. Beautiful job with the Modi Mayor article and beautiful job on all of you reporting on Jonah Bolden. And we'll catch up with you very soon. Thanks, Jack. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on the Marketplace, of course. You can stay up to date right throughout the free agency period and with Summer League coming up as well via nbl.com.au and all of the NBL social media platforms.